Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and welcome to another edition of Tarot Tuesday this week, episode number 93. Uh, happy Thanksgiving with the uh, Housewives Tarot. Uh, today we're going to take a kind of kitschy look into, uh, into the tarot with one of our very favorite decks, especially around holiday season when we're feeling all sorts of domestic-y and blissfully. Uh, I am going to turn my lights because they are blinding me. I can only see them in my reflection and that is not okay not okay mr lights there we go so uh this week uh the housewives tarot one of our favorite decks to bring out around holiday time i know a lot of times they bring out food fortune uh to tell us what we should pack or put into our menus for holidays but i thought it's thanksgiving most people already know what they're going to do let's go ahead and talk about uh, what the Housewives Tarot has for us. So I will apologize if you have scrolled off the screen uh, asking for readings because I don't see you. I see some people, but not all the people. So a couple of quick announcements before I start gathering up readings. So just really just pump the brakes. Um, so a couple of quick things. One is um, thank you very much for those of you who continue to support the show uh, by following and subscribing. These things help because it lets uh, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram know that you're enjoying the work uh, and that's what gets it forward in your feed. So if you're missing posts or not seeing things, that's probably why or one of the factors as to why. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for the folks to continue to support, uh, support me through Patreon and $5 Friday and the $5 Friday Club. I really appreciate that. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, this week is, of course, uh, Black Friday and shop small Saturday and all that great stuff. Um, so um, there is a tomorrow morning, I'll post a discount code for readings. Um, so if in gift cards, so if you want to uh, support the show and share the show or just treat yourself, um, this is going to be a good week to do that because the discount is going to be about 30%. I think I think it's 30%. I set it up. I set it up last week. So I know remember off the top of my head, but I do think it's 30% uh, discount. And if it's less than that, I'll change it. Uh, but 30% on um, anything you want to purchase in terms of private readings. That's because um, I, you guys do a really great thing for me and I really enjoy it. And I want you to uh, enjoy yourself and have yourself maybe a little, a little treat or treat a friend uh, to a fun time. So uh, with that, let me gather up some, um, let me gather up some readings, shall we? Uh, there's Lakin who earned her top fan badge. Good for you. Uh, so the first person I see in my list, because I can't scroll any higher, is Kathy IE. So if you're in before Kathy IE, this is a good time to remind yourself to get back in. Hi, Yasini. How are you? Cheryl, for sure. I'll be happy to. Absolutely. Hello, Lakin. How are you? Happy Thanksgiving to you, Gwen. Uh, Yasinia, I can add you as well. Yep. Sure, Crystal Lynn, I can add you. Do, 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 do. Teresa, I'll add you as well. Uh, hey, Carrie, it's been a while since we've seen you around. Awesome to see you. You sure can get a reading. Hey, Ashley, absolutely, you can have a reading. It's my pleasure. I got you, Kathy IE. Happy turkey to you, Ginger. Sure can, Catherine. Catherine, did you make your way down from the great white north to the great sunny beaches of Florida yet? Uh, sure, like, and you can absolutely have a reading. It'd be my my pleasure, of course. Um, Michelle T, for sure. Uh, I've got you as well. Hey, Shalia. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you're around. I was wondering where you were. Um, so Shalia is on the list. Shelly P, I've got you on the list as well. Uh, Nicole, absolutely be my pleasure. Um, <laughs> shave, why, what's that, Tech? Uh, I, I've decided that I'm going to give my face a bit of a rest for a while. So, looking, I am currently in the 10 days newly homeless look where I haven't been able to find a place to shave yet. Uh, so... <clears throat> but I'm through my busy period, 
I'm through some travel. Um, this is a good time to give myself a little bit of a break and let things grow, let things go a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. If you don't like it, well, of course we'll shave it. So there you go. All right, roses. I've got you. Uh, hey, Link. Thank you for sharing it. Hey, Kate. Uh, I've got you on the list as well. I've got you, Kathy. I. Hey, Mark. How are you? I've got you, Ashley. Sure, Zach. I can add you as well. It'll be my pleasure, buddy. Um, yeah, Michelle T. I've got you, Link. Awesome to see you again. Hey, Claudia. How are you? Robin K, I've got you. I always say Robin K, but are there other Robins? Um, Angelina on the show, I don't know. I think there was at some point. Maybe that's how you became Robin K. Uh, I got you on the list, Kate. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Uh, Crystal Ann, I got you in. Uh, Cassie IE, I've got you as well. Got you, Cheryl. Yeah, absolutely. Got you, Catherine. Absolutely. Robin K. Got you. Ginger, adding you. Got you, Kate. Robin K. Got you. Rose has got you. Michelle, how are you? You never messaged me, Michelle. Um, or if you did, I missed it. Um, Shelly Pratt, I got you. Cassie IE, I got you. Teresa. Yep, you're welcome. Got you, Michelle, of course. Got you, Zach. Uh, you did, Carrie. That's great. I'm sorry you had to leave. Although it is a little chilly. It is a little chilly. Uh, uh, well, thank you, Gwen, for stopping by to say hello. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I went north, as you can see, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I got you, Michelle. Uh, Rose, I've got you. Angelina, I've got you. Michelle, I've got you. Lakin, I've got you. Um, Flora, I've got you. I'm guessing it's Flora, but I'll add you to the list. It'll be my pleasure. Hey, Adam, how are you? Kate, I've got you. <laughs> don't burn, no, don't burn the pies. Catching up on the list. Catching up on the list. Hi, Stephanie CC. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure to see you. So, um all right friends yeah courtney i can add you the list of course um of course of course um okay so here's my list right so i can add as people come in of course but uh kathy ie cheryl yasinia crystal lynn teresa carrie ashley Catherine, lakin michelle t shalia shelly p uh, Nicole, Rose, Kate, um, she's Kate F, even though there's no other Kates, but I think at some point there was. Zach, Robin K, same reason. Angelina, Cassie, IE, Ginger, Michelle, Flora, Courtney, Santoso, hi. Crystal Lynn, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, oh, Beverly Lee, thank you for just jumping on to say hi. Uh, and happy Thanksgiving. That's super nice of you and super sweet of you. Um, <laughs> well, happy birthday to you, Flora. All right, so friends, that's who's on the list. Let's get going. Again, the Housewives Tarot. This is one of these decks that is becoming increasingly hard to find. Um, certainly a lot of folks have the deck and read with the deck. Uh, it's very popular, very funny, very quirky, as Claudia said earlier. Uh, very kind of kitschy messaging, pokes fun at a lot of uh, the kind of 1950s Americana, uh, but it does so in a way that I think it's uh, I think it's a lot of it's, it's a lot of fun. But it's a deck that's kind of it is becoming. Every time I look and set up the show, uh, um, I notice that. It's like increasingly hard to find on Amazon, uh, which means there's a good chance you'll, if you want it, Amazon and Amazon is out of it. Go find a local spirit shop. If you're in Cleveland, it's God is a Lead. If you're in Erie, it's Love, Light, Heart, Soul. If you're in Buffalo, it's Paranormal Oddities. And ask those folks if they can give you, if they can order it or find it for you if you're interested. Uh, they're good people and they'll do that sort of thing. So let's get on. With some reading, shall we? 
let's get on with some readings. I've blathered on enough. Uh, it's time to get our it's time to get our uh, turkeys going. All right, so Kathy, I.E., this one's for you. It's the first card of the deck, and it's the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles is a suit of resources, right? So, oh my goodness, these are really bright. Let me see if I can find my. I don't know if I have. I don't know if I can find a remote. Oh, oh, dearest light remote, where are you? We'll just do this for a while. So I'm sorry, not the Ten of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles. Pentacles is a suit of resources. So this is time, money, energy, Kathy. E. These are the things that you use to get, or things you use to get the things that you want in your life. So the Two of Pentacles talks it kind of about um, conflicting priorities, fluidity, fluidity, imbalance uh, in our resources. So it might mean um, kind of a setback financially or competing priorities financially. Um, it also could mean, um, it also could mean um, just, I'm going to kick the light a little bit here. Um, it also could mean um, just kind of a, 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 a lot of changes that are going on in your life with regard to time and energy and things just seem to feel out of whack, right? You can kind of see, uh, see the mom here all well-dressed, but dog, kid pulling on her, giving that sense of kind of being pulled in two directions and that kind of sense of balancing these pentacles. And so Kathy, I just think this is more kind of an acknowledgement of where you are right now in your life, that things are a little bit fluid, they're a little bit unstable, uh, but that in time this will improve, that you have the skills and the poise and the grace to handle it. But for now, things are going to be kind of trapped in this land of kind of imbalance or fluidity, and you're not going to be able to make any ground. Maybe that's more about your energy during this holiday period where, you know, people are coming at you in different directions and everything's kind of pulling away from who you are at your core. I think it's okay for you to talk about what needs you have for your energy and how you need to recharge that. So, so there you go. That's what that, that's what I think that means. I'm just going to, excuse me while I kick that light over just a little bit and tighten up the oh, <laughs> and tighten up the light hang on you're going to see lights change here for me there we go all right i'm a, i'm a little happier with that i got to figure out a different way the lights have been getting moved around a lot so um, they're not in the normal place where i leave them oh. all right so that makes sense, Kathy. Let me know. Let me know uh, in the comments. This brings us to Cheryl J. What's up, Cheryl J? Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. So we just saw Pentacles. Also, the light and auto lights adjusting a little bit. So Queen of Pentacles here, right? Pentacles, the suit of resources, time, money, energy. And the Queen of Pentacles kind of talks about our ability to manage the resources in our life. And Cheryl, I think what this really is more talking about is you needing to be in this role as the Queen of Pentacles. I think people are looking to you to kind of for your kind of quiet wisdom, your sense of experience, your observation of how these um, how resources are spent for you and your family or you and your loved ones, right? And there's a lot of demand on this. There's a lot of can we have this? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do this? The Queen of Pentacles is kind of that measured confidant around kind of paying attention to all the different assets so cheryl this is a time where you're going to be, want to be working with the king of pentacles right around decision making but i think really what the queen of pentacles talks about is being you being informed of the financial resources in your life where what's the budget where do we need to spend our money on how do we prioritize things what is the need what is a want so i think for you this is really more about this kind of fastidious, this careful management of resources, this paying attention to the things that the family needs. So hopefully that makes sense. So things are fluid for that reason, Kathy. All right. I was attacked by the light. 
Hey, Jennifer, I'm good. How are you? Um, all right. All right, Yesenia, this brings us to you. Yesenia has been trying to get on for weeks, and finally she got there. Ace of Pentacles, which makes me think that these aren't shuffled. <laughs> so many Pentacles. It's been like weeks of Pentacle work with you folks. All right, so Ace of Pentacles. Sorry, the light is it's white balancing on me. I hate this thing. So Ace of Pentacles, again, suit of resources, time, money, energy, the things we use to get the things we want. And the Ace of Pentacles talks a little bit about a bit of a windfall, something that's going to be happening for you, a new opportunity for your resources in your life. So look for this. I feel like Spirit's kind of talking to me a little bit about a new investment opportunity or a new way for you to invest. Maybe, Yesenia, this is what you've been thinking about all along. It could just be that there's an opportunity, I think, related to your work um, that is going to enable you to kind of Put a little bit away and i feel like that's the real message from spirit here is this, put a little bit away put a little bit away uh and the ace of pentacles is going to present you with an opportunity to do that in a way that doesn't necessarily compromise um your daily budgeting or your weekly or monthly spending so very practical advice very practical advice we all want for something a little bit sexier but we end up getting practical The best laid plans, my friends. <laughs> so don't give in to the crazy four-year-old who wants a lot of dolls. Of course, Cheryl, unless you want dolls too. <laughs> uh, well, Jennifer, I can add to the list. We'll add Jennifer Rose to the list because, of course, it's always better to be on the list than off the list. Hey, Rose Ellen, how are you? Hey, for those of you who participated in the uh, Instagram Rebel Deck readings, what did you think about that? That was a lot of fun. I had fun with it anyway. I was feeling feisty, and I just sat in the kitchen all, all Sunday and did that stuff. All right, this brings us to Crystal Lynn. Probably another pentacle, four of pentacles. Look at that, my God. My God, gang, you and your pentacles. I'm going to shuffle them extra, extra, just to see if we get out of the pentacles land. So Crystal Lynn, four of pentacles. Four of pentacles talks about being guarded about your resources. Frivolous spending be damned. Guarded about your resources. But I don't feel like this is about financial resources, although... It's always a good idea. That's not psychic. It's always a good idea to be measured about that stuff. So don't go cuckoo bananas, um, spending a lot of money. But I feel like for you, Crystalline, particularly around this time of Thanksgiving and family and friends and frenemies and fa family enemies, I don't know how you say that. Um, Fenemy, I don't know, family that you just as soon not see. Um, I feel like for you, this is more about your energy uh, as a resource. So be guarded about how you spend it. Um, it's okay for you to say no. It's okay for you. Spirit saying, Spirit saying, limit your time, limit your time, limit your exposure, limit your energy, right? You don't need to be there all day. You can go over for the meal and leave, or you can just say, I'll come for dessert or like that kind of thing. Like you, you're being, you're, putting your feeling obligated and obligations around your energy and time, right? It's okay for you to state what you want. Be guarded about that. Good advice. All right. Good advice. That's good advice for everybody. Oh, I'm so glad, Rosalyn. That is a fun deck. I felt bad. We blew up the creator of the deck but then she was so gracious and kind by saying that she didn't mind it but um hopefully if you did participate or even if you didn't go and like her stuff uh it's so fun and she's doing some neat uh neat things with her magic so make sure you go and do that and uh claudia was good to bring it to my attention that uh we haven't done a rebel deck uh tarot tuesday in a while so uh, i put that into the schedule it's not next week, but it might be the week after.
So I'm just giving him an extra bit of shuffle, see if we can get out of the land of pentacles here. Not that we need to. I mean, the messages are for you, so. Fama enemies. <laughs> I'm so glad, Krista. All right. So, Teresa, this one's for you. Hey, look at you, Teresa. You got, we broke from the Pentacles run into our least favorite card of the deck, the Three of Swords. So, the Three, where the hell is Haney tonight? The Three of Swords. Um, three of Swords talks again. So, Swords, you remember, is through the mind, thoughts, ideas knowledge and the three of swords talks about almost literally kind of being ripped apart by decision right that you have so many options or you have a different options around a particular controversy or sensitive issue or situation and you are being placed Teresa in a position where you need to make a decision however however the decision you make will hurt someone or cause pain or suffering in some way it's unavoidable and so you've been spending, maybe you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to kind of negotiate this and compromise and try to protect people's um, well-being and safety, all the while diluting the decision that needs to be made. The Three of Swords kind of acknowledges that heartache, acknowledges that we're, to some degree we're almost being ripped apart by this indecision that we need to make or this indecision we're in and the decision we need to make. It's, a, it's an acknowledgement, it's a validation more than it is anything else. But it also does come with kind of a, some guidance, which is to say, how can you move through this? And that is just to make a decision, make a decision. So right now it's not about right or wrong because we know there's positive and negative to each. Really it's about what's making um, a decision because indecision is what's causing a lot of the problems. I'll be honest, I really hated this. I've hated this today a lot, but I kind of dig it in the camera. <laughs> and I think that's silly. <laughs> and now I'm having an office moment where Kelly says webcams make me look like what I make me make me look the way I am in my fantasies. All right, Carrie, this one's for you, Carrie. Welcome back, Carrie. Knight of Wands, the Knight of Wands. So Knight of Wands, suit of work, effort, task, the things we do to get the things we want. And the Knight of Wands kind of is, you can see the kind of intensity in this character, right? It's a kid with his pot in the, on his head because, of course, we know that pots are OSHA-approved safety um, devices. Um, the plunger, however, not so much. But you can see that the Knight of Wands comes kind of charging in with the termination Right, so the Knight of Wands talks about being determined and ready for a change in your work. So um, I think the change is more attitudinal. I think the change is more energetic. And I think this is really more about you kind of stealing yourself, readying yourself. Uh, it's for the confrontation or the change or um, the situation that's about to arise. So grab your pot, slap it on your head, Get your plunger, get on the bike, and charge into this thing. You, you are, you need to be determined, you need to be tough, you need to be ready to be who you are in this situation. So you are ready for this. You just need to kind of brace yourself and steel yourself for the situation that's arising with, with regard to your work or task. Um, Spirit's kind of talking to me kind of about it. They're saying fight or flight, fight or flight. And I don't know if that means that you're kind of at a position where you're kind of ready that this needs to change or I need to go. Uh, but they're kind of talking about this. They're talking, they're, I can't tell whether it's a warning or it's at least a signal that this is a lot more binary uh, than uh, let's negotiate. <laughs> well, Haney's sleeping. She probably deserves it. She's had stuff going on. We know.
I saw a guy when I was in Pittsburgh, and he had a hat like this, but it was far more floppy. And I thought, that's nice, but I can't pull that off. I can't pull that off. Well, I appreciate you coming, Cheryl, and giving us the last bit of your phone's juice. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll be around, of course. All right, this brings us to Ashley. It's Ashley, Catherine, Lake, and Michelle T., Shalia, Shelly P., and others after that. All right, the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands for you, Ashley. So again, Wands talks about work, effort, task, the things we do to get the things we want. And the Page of Wands, you can see eager to do something, certainly eager to do something, right? It, you can see the kind of childlike joy on his face, like super wanting to help with the work, wanting to do more, wanting to take on the extra work and being kind of eager to support or help kind of a more senior person. What the Page of Wands doesn't realize and what we need to know about this particular card is that the enthusiasm is only one part of the equation, ability, competence, right? These are the other parts of the equation the page really is lacking. And so Ashley, for you, while you may be excited about taking on uh, a new role or a new work or new something, you know what this computer needs is dark mode. Um, so that's, let me see if this changes things a little bit. God, I hope I don't disconnect you. Goodbye if I do. <laughs> It didn't help, uh, but I feel better about it. So, um, but this is about a, an acknowledgement that um, you uh, don't quite have all of the skills or confidence that you need and you need to seek out some of that. So maybe it's more coaching, maybe it's more guidance, maybe it's just more practice, but your enthusiasm is great, it's energetic, it keeps things moving and that's important. Recognize though that you need some additional competence, uh, some additional training and skill. Well, I hope you're back next Tuesday. I haven't even announced. Uh, I haven't even announced yet what the deck is. What could it be? What could it be? Let's see if people can guess. Let's see if people can guess what the deck is. Because I'm gonna. I can say I'm laying low this weekend, but I wanted to get ahead of ahead of my work a little bit. All right, Catherine from the Quebec, Florida uh, railroad here, the the pipeline. Catherine, I'll tell you that my Montreal thing. I don't know what's going on with it yet. I know you asked about what, what will I be in Montreal. I don't know. Uh, the, the work that I'm doing up there is not related to this work, but it is, it has proceeded. So now I just got to figure out what to do and I got to watch my deadlines here. All right. So for you, Catherine, it's the five of pentacles, the five of pentacles, suit of resources, time, money, energy, and the five of pentacles uh, talks a little bit about maybe a major expense that just happened and kind of needing to kind of recover and recuperate from that. So probably related to your travel, right? But there's been kind of a major expense here with regard to your time, money, and energy. I feel like this is about energy and money. And this is kind of a period for you to kind of, there's like this whoa on this character's face um, and what that means. And oh my gosh, this is terrible. Um, but um, it just means that we kind of need to recognize we still have some resources. Things are going to slow down or take a bit of a step back here for us but that we still have the resources and we need to kind of make sure that we're carefully uh, juggling them, getting them stacked back up um, and allowing ourselves to kind of re to continue to move forward with this kind of major savings. I feel like if spirits kind of talking to me about you kind of like um, there's a saying, um, you know, uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And I feel like you kind of shuffle. I feel like there was like a shuffling of energy or a shuffling of time or a, shuffling of money to pay for something that might be a little bit more impulsive or urgent in the moment, um, but that it took you away from maybe some longer term goals. This is about kind of just being focused and rebuilding that. You're welcome, Ashley. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it is freezing. 
oh my gosh, is there such a thing as the Christmas deck cramp? Is there such a thing as the Krampus deck? If there is, we should we should know more about that. <laughs> Uh, no, Claudia is a good guess, but I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for Angelarium yet. I don't know. All right, this brings us to Lakin. I don't know if I'm ready for Angelarium yet. I might need to do a couple more, uh, a couple more open reads uh, in the group or Instagram. Get my confidence up. Well, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Five hour nap, Greta, my goodness. I'll add you the list. But I'm going to tell you, if you got a five hour nap this afternoon, you got everything you need. <laughs> oh, I don't want to look it up. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to look it up, Catherine. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. Hey, Joe, what do you know? All right, this brings us to Lakin. All right, Lakin, Page of Swords, Page of Swords. Okay, so we read the Page of Wands a minute ago, and the Page of Swords, similar, but with regard to our thinking, ideas, and knowledge. The Page of Swords is energetic, runs with scissors, impulsive, impulsivity, enthusiastic. That's all well and good. But... Our thinking this is kind of a reminder that some of our thinking is not well situated, right? It's enthusiastic. It feels good. We might even feel like we got it. This is the there I nailed it effect or what I call, I'm going to tip my nerdy hat here. We call vicarious efficacy where we see something on, on TV or in a video and we think we can do it, right? So sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking when we're fully prepared. So right now what you've got going on, Lincoln, is a bunch of thoughts in your head that kind of seem like they're fleshed out, seem like they're real, seem like they're accomplishable, but they're not. The Page of Swords is running with scissors because the Page of Swords doesn't know not to run with scissors. And so this is really about you taking the time to be contemplative, for you to listen to guidance, for you to seek out people who can help you to get to the things that you want to get to. This isn't a no. It's not a stop. It's not a deal breaker. It's just simply to say, if fools rush in, that's kind of what I want to say to you. That's what spirit says. Fools rush in. And so take the time to accomplish your goal in the right way, in the right way. And that's where guidance help, um, someone who can kind of help steer the ship for you or give you perspective that maybe you don't see. Um, essentially like a, a coach or um Somebody like that. All right. So that was Lincoln. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, so that was Lincoln. And this brings us to Michelle T. Shalia, Shelly P, Nicole Rose, and Kate F. And others are after that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It was good. And it's because I had the time to look it up. Uh, Joe, I can add you the list because you know you're better off on the list than off the list. <laughs> oh, Catherine, thank you. You're fantastic too. So maybe Greta needs to Greta needs to do her own show on how do we score naps like this. <laughs> I've got not gotten to you not at all. Not yet, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 swears be nice <laughs> i didn't get to you jennifer you're this is where i am you can see where you are so we got a little ways to go okay <laughs> wouldn't it have been great if it was a strength card though um, all right, Michelle T. I'm not going to reread it. You can go back. It was just a minute ago. All right, Michelle T. Six of Cups, Six of Cups. So the Six of Cups 
cups is suit of emotions, relationships, emotionally important relationships, love, not love, romance, not romance. And so the six of cups kind of talks about regaining some of that childlike joy of the relationships that we are in. Um, spirits particularly talking to me about relationships that you have in your life with people that are younger than you, right? So that's kind of what I'm hearing and seeing from spirit. So this is this might be your kids or uh, younger people in your life, and this is kind of about regaining some of that. So this is traditions, it's stories, it's experiences. That's what spirit wants me to key in on. It's the experiences of youth that allow us to kind of recapture some of that innocence and joy and free kind of free relationship with these people in our life. And I think that's really what you need to hear. Um, it could be about kind of recapturing the romantic joys with a partner, uh, but I really think this is more about kind of younger people in your life and recapturing some of those experiences. Um, maybe this is a particular holiday or Thanksgiving for you where you tell more of those stories or remake some of those recipes or try to re, um, rebuild or um, replicate the experiences of times gone by to allow some people, allow you and others, that moment of innocence um, in pink lemonades. Pink lemonade is so gratuitously innocent. <laughs> All right, this brings us to Shalia. Shalia. I'm so happy you're here. I've been worried about you. All right, Shaylee, here we go. This one's for you, and it is the King of Cups, the King of Cups. So Cups, we just saw, emotions, relationships. Um, and the King of Cups talks about making some important decisions. I think for you right now, it's the King of Cups talking about making some important decisions about your relationships. The King of Cups is often portrayed as kind of a stalwart, steady figure in kind of fluidity and in sort of kind of water, sometimes above their heads or rough water behind them. So that we see the King of Cups kind of portrayed here with um, some liquor around them. And it kind of suggests that there's a bit of instability, a little bit of difficulty, a little bit of kind of a lack of a lack of things being easy right now. But the King of Cups is really more about kind of making those calm, steady, firm decisions because they need to be made. Spirit's talking to me a little bit about tougher love um, and a little bit about being clear about this. The decisions you're making are not about you not loving someone, but rather about you loving them and providing them an opportunity to grow. So you're presenting challenge, but you're also presenting support, right? I can't do this right now, but there are other things that I can do. That's what Spirit's saying. So hopefully that makes sense. I didn't know I'm, I'm keeping you on the list, Joe. I don't care what you say. You're on the list because that is what that is what we do, friend. Because being on the list is good intention. And if we get there, we get there, man. We're hustling. We're hustling. Like we are reading like we're on fire today. Um, all right, so this brings us to Shelly P. Shelly P, the hanged man. The hanged man. So Shelly P, time to get your man and hang him upside down. No. The hanged man talks about uh, new perspective. New perspective, right? Seeing things from a new direction. And so Shelly P, um, you become a little bit too comfortable in this direction. You're starting to overlook things or not see things. You're developing blind spots because you've been too comfortable looking at 
this situation through this lens. This is about you getting a new perspective. So new perspective comes from talking to new people. New perspective talks comes from reading a new thing. New perspective comes from having a new experience. And so these are the things that you need to kind of be looking at. How do you address the situation that you have in spirit show me this close to you? This is about you and your immediate people. So whoever your people are, and you need to get a new perspective, a new vantage point uh, for this for this situation in order for you to see the solution. That's the thing. You don't see a solution right now because you're either too close to it or you just have blind spots around it. So I would stop asking other people what they do. And I would start asking other people what they see. That's what I would do. That's what spirit says would be a good idea. All right. No. Yeah, you can stick them back together with frosting. Oh, Joe, come on now. Don't be like that. Don't be a grumpy Gus. <laughs> All right, this brings us to Nicole. What's Nicole got for us here? What's Nicole got for us here? And it is the Queen of Pentacles again. So Pentacles we already saw tonight, and Pentacles talks again about resources, and the Queen of Pentacles talks about management or of these resources and what those mean. And so um, that's what you kind of need to become right now. Right, so the energy, the time, the money out of your life, or it, the being used through your life, gained and lost, gained and lost, gained and lost. Right, this talks about you kind of reclaiming some of that in a way that's comfortable for you. I see the queen here operating a little bit more solo, right, and kind of like decisions are being put upon you, um, but. Uh, you, the reason that they're being put upon you is because you have kind of a unique capability of seeing um, seeing the whole kind of the, the whole perspective. So remember that the king is a pairing card here. And so the king is going to be about the decision making, but the queen is going to be about the information for you. So what are the things you need to do to kind of regain some resource footing in your life, time, money, energy? I didn't miss, no, you didn't miss yours, Courtney. We're a ways off. So it's Roses, Kate F., Zach, Robin K., Angelina, and then others are after that. All right, Rose. All right, Rose. Here we go. And it is the Knight of Swords, the Knight of Swords. Look how cool this guy is, Rose. All right, Knight of Swords. So again, uh, swords is through the mind, thoughts, and ideas. It's intelligence, right? And so uh, the Knight of Swords talks about you being kind. You can see this is different from the Knight of Wands, right? The Knight of Swords here is really more about composure, right? He's cool. He's super cool, way cooler than I've ever been. But the Knight of Swords here talks of kind of about being cool and steady under pressure and movement. So things will change because that's what the night tells us. But it's going to be about you kind of remaining calm and focused in your thinking. Your tendency is to go, Bleh! and the Knight of Swords is coming to you to say, focus, focus. So whatever you need to kind of do to be focused, calm, cool, right? Be distant, say nothing instead of saying something. You're not always, you don't, best bit of advice I ever got from anybody was you don't have to respond to everything. I say it about 14 times a day. Um, usually right before I respond or right as I'm going to respond and I stop myself. So you don't have to respond to everything. So I think Spirit's kind of talking to me more about you, Rose, is kind of shushing, just shush down. Listen, think about it. Hey, I'll get back to you on this but I think you're gonna start seeing some changes in your environment that are gonna require you to think a little bit differently. And that's what the Nine of Swords talks about. All 
Well, have fun back to work. Have fun back to work, Lincoln. All right, Kate F. Let's get you going here. What's going on for Kate? Maybe she'll get a card with some cookies on it. Let's find out. Let's find out, shall we? The Hierophant. The Hierophant says go to YouTube and look up how to fix cookies. Although I think you got good advice about just eating them. <laughs> so the Hierophant talks about us seeking the guidance of a trusted elder. A trusted elder. So, um, <sighs> Um, so, um, that's what you, yeah, the Hierophant. So this is about seeking guidance from a higher power, higher calling expert guru, right? And I think for you, Kate, this is really less about kind of tangible, physical, real world stuff and more for you about kind of the spiritual world. I think you've been kind of edging to a place or you've been kind of sitting on the border of maybe doing something spiritually or doing something um, with regard to your energy and your spirit and your kind of your your spirit work and I feel like the Hierophant for you is kind of go seek guidance from a higher power a higher calling to find out what it is that you're supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to be doing it I feel like to some degree Kate this is meditative but I also feel like they're showing me the hermit card with this like seeking out someone who can help you kind of grow in this particular area. I think it's time for you to, they're saying kind of come out of your shell. All right, this brings us to Zach. All right, Zach, this one's for you. And it is the 10 of wands, the 10 of wands. So Zach, 10 of wands, suit of work effort, task, the things we do to get the things that we want. And the 10 of wands talks about you kind of being, oh, right? Look at how messy this card is. Like it just talks to me about struggle, right? I heard something fun today. Someone said the struggle bus, we're all in the struggle bus. So the 10 of wands, Zach, really talks to me for you about just that sense of being done, just being done. Um, so we're packing our shit up, we're taking, we're moving. So this might be a work project for you that's kind of reached its final conclusion or about to reach its final stage, um, which we may or may not have talked about, but I feel like this is kind of, you've reached the final stage or the final usefulness of this work and you're about to kind of plateau and then level up. And so the 10 of wands kind of signals that transition kind of we've been, we're done with this project. That's what the 10 represents. It doesn't mean it was easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means that we're going to kind of reach a point where we're going to be done. I do see a sense of struggle with you with this, not only in that it's transition, but also in making that transition is going to be a bit of a struggle. But look, Zach, look how you can very easily manage these things by just forming a quick lashing and having all of your instruments all at once. Um, but it does kind of talk about you packing your stuff up and moving on. Let me catch up. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry, buddy. Don't let don't let the don't let the turkeys get you down, buddy. Don't let the turkeys get you down. Happy Thanksgiving, Annie. We're glad you're here. All right, Robin K, this one's for you. Robin K, it's the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords. Oh, look how fun this card is. The Four of Swords, right, talks about thoughts, ideas, knowledge. And the Four of Swords kind of talks about um, kind of everything kind of going in the same direction. Get everything thinking in the same direction. Notice the kind of sense of self-care and calm and kind of peace in this character because all of the knives, all of the swords are kind of going into, into the same project, into the same thing. So Robin K, for you, this is really more about focus, focus in getting all your thoughts and ideas moving towards your goal. So I think for you, there really is some practical steps here 
One is that you need to set and clarify your goal, your vision. What is it? And everything else that's on in that needs to go away. I think that's part of the issue that you're struggling with is you want to do a lot of things all at once. And the reality is that for right now, you only can really do one of those things at a time. So spend time thinking about what that is and then get all your thoughts and all your kind of idea energy moving in that direction. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad, Kate. I'm glad. I just shuffled the cards separately. That's what I need. I need a card shuffler. All right. All right. This brings us to Angelina, Cassie, IE, Ginger, Michelle, and others are after that. We're, we're hustling here, people. We got about 20 minutes, and we're just hustling. Um, all right, so we talked about the hermit just a minute ago, Angelina. So in addition, Angelina, to having a bubble bath, and everybody loves bubble bath, um, Angelina, the hermit talks about uh, being kind of the guru, right? So think about this as every, no mom can ever take a bath by themselves. Um, but think about this really is more about kind of uh, being a sense of isolated and above and perspective and knowledge and kind of calling forward people into that knowledge. So I think, Angelina, for you, this is less about you being the hermit and more about you seeking the hermit. I think this is more about you kind of looking forward or looking kind of up for um, someone who might be a little bit removed from you or a little bit outside the situation to give you the light of truth, the light of knowledge and help you to kind of see the situation from their kind of very high vantage point. So that's what the hermit represents to me for you right now. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, Kate. Good luck with your cookies. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a bubble bath? Man? Everybody wants a bubble bath. All right. This brings us to Cassie IE. <laughs> Cassie IE. All right. The Four of Wands, the Four of Wands. So Wands, suit of work, effort, task, right? And the Four of Wands talks to me a little bit kind of about an early victory. So if we look, we remember the Ace, Two, Three of Wands. We talked about kind of the, the Two of Wands, kind of setting a direction of Three of Wands, accomplishing a direction. And the Four of Wands talks to kind of, to me, Cassie, about kind of an early victory or early win or early celebration with regard to your work. So... What Spirit's talking to me, and maybe this is very Thanksgiving oriented, that you've taken on some new direction or some new task or some new efforting, something that's pushed you kind of into something, a new arena for your work and your tasking. And so, and you've done pretty well, maybe not perfectly, maybe not as well as you thought you'd do, but the Four of Wands talks kind of about you taking a bit of a step back getting a bit of a perspective, recognizing and celebrating the work that you've accomplished to this point. I think that you need that probably now more than anything. It's just kind of that bit of a break, a celebration, a recognition that you've done well, and that's going to give you the energy to go into the next, kind of the next hurdle, okay? Four of Wands. Whew. All right, Ginger, this brings us to Ginger, Michelle, Flora, and others after that, including you, Joe. You're still on the list, so the take that. You don't like bubble baths, Haney? All right, you don't have to have a bubble bath. <laughs> what about a bubble shower? Would you take a bubble shower? <laughs> All right. 
Ginger, the Ten of Wands, you were probably looking at Zach's card earlier and saying, that ah, is absolutely me, absolutely me. The Ten of Wands, Ginger, again, task, effort, work, and it talks kind of about being kind of finished, almost battle-worn from this project. Maybe this is how you're going to feel on Thursday afternoon when the turkey hits the table, just beat up and ready to be done. You won't even want turkey. Just microwave some popcorn and drink some wine and watch a movie. Um, but I think the Ten of Wands talks to you about being kind of finally at a point with your work where you're kind of ready to start to look for that transition. So we talked to Zach earlier and the same messaging applies here. We're kind of seeing kind of the end of one stage, a plateau and then a leveling up or a staging up uh, into the next set of work. This is a good time, Spirit talks to me, Ginger, about this is a good time for you to kind of reflect on the things that have brought you to this point, catalog the things that you think you'll need in the next stage, let go of the things you don't, the stress, the worry, the anxieties, the bullshit, and then allow yourself to kind of move into this transition. Yes, you're tired. Yes, you're battle worn. Yes, there will be more. Yes, there will be new struggles. But I think for you, for right now, this kind of signals that you reaching kind of an end point of that for a period of time. <laughs> yes, Haney, I do it just for you now. In my real life, Haney, you should know that I work with a wand, and, and now I don't ever not think about that. <laughs> All right, Michelle. The Ace of Wands with a D. Uh, we just, I gotta come on. I gotta go back to some of the other. All right. So the Ace of Wands, Michelle, uh, Michelle M talks about a, a. I feel like this keeps coming up for you. My pen is. My pen has decided it has left. It has shed its mortal coil. Never fear, Michelle M. The Ace of Wands presents a new opportunity for you with regards to your work and effort. I feel like we talk about this a lot for you. Why are you just not taking it? Spirit wants to know how many times will we present this new work to you before you feel like you're going to be ready to take it? That's all Spirit's talking to me about. So a new opportunity for work, task, effort for you to put your effort into things. And importantly, right, you need to be willing to take it and do something with it. I think that's what they're saying you got to get the confidence to do this michelle they're not presenting you an opportunity because they want to see you fail spirits presenting you an opportunity for work and effort and change in that because they know that you'll succeed that doesn't mean you're not going to struggle a little bit it just means that um you're not you're not going to fail right so we got to work and grow but sheesh that's what spirit's saying sheesh are they all right Oh, Haney knows things. <laughs> Haney knows things. She says them too. All right, Flora, this brings us to Flora in the most wonderful of ways. All right. All right, Flora, this one's for you. Uh, and it is the Two of Cups, Flora, the Two of Cups. So, Cups is a suit of emotion, love, romance, not love, not romance. Um, but relationships nonetheless. And the Two of Cups talks about a coming together, Flora. This is that new relationship smell. So it's either a new relationship or a new energy or new aspect or rejuvenation of a relationship. So a lot of times we're going to read the Two of Cups and we're going to say it's a new relationship. People will be like, I've been married for like 30 years and that's not going to happen. But that's not always what it means, is it? It, it also can mean a rejuvenation of the relationships. But the Two of Cups talks about that kind of fun relationship smell. You kind of see that people are kind of, they're, it's at a bit of a distance, but they're still enjoying each other. So it's that kind of, that kind of new, that kind of newness, that kind of new discomfort, but still a lot of fun. Um, but this also could mean for you, Flora, that there's a new relationship coming your way. Just look for that. 
um, be mindful of it. And I think what you need to hear most from Spirit is that these new relationships can present some turmoil and some struggle and some opportunities to learn about yourself and about the other person and you need to give yourself a little bit of a clearance and a, cre a kind of a give yourself a little bit of latitude with that and say oh well i made a mistake i'm sorry about that but i've learned from the next time and same with the other person give them the opportunity to say they made a mistake or give yourself the opportunity to tell them that it was a mistake and allow them to learn and correct from it all right this brings us to courtney we're going to do them all, friends. Courtney, Jennifer, Rose, Greta, and Joe. We're doing them all. I don't care what Joe has to say. Joe's getting a reading tonight because I said so. And so, Joe, just get a reading. <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve it. Don't. It's not. I'm not forcing it upon you. I'm saying that you deserve it. You deserve it. It's tough to get them all in a night, and I'm glad that we're going to be able to. All right. All right, this brings us to Courtney. Courtney, my dear. What do we got going on here? It is the King of Swords. Well, good, well, good for you. The King. Look at the size of the shish kebab on that guy. All right, so the King of Swords. The King of Swords in his glorious, wonderful sword. The King of Swords, thoughts, ideas, knowledge. And the King of Swords is about making bold decisions. Bold decisions. They're like, what? A one-foot shish kebab? No, no, my friend. How about a sword of shish kebabs? Um, so the King of Swords is going to be about making bold, confident decisions about what you're thinking about. Courtney, enough dancing around this, enough tippy-toeing, enough kind of gingerly going around it, no slam on ginger, but enough of kind of delicately addressing the situations and thoughts and ideas. This is a time for bold action. You, I, Spirit's telling me you've, you've waited for somebody else to make the decision that they need to for you and for them, and that's not going to happen. You now need to take this role. Like Spirit is very forward with me, like very kind of decision forward. This decision will be made. It will be made by you. It will not be made by other people. So there's that. <laughs> Good luck. Sounds fun. <laughs> oh, just, just, just. I'm glad you're staying, Joe. You're still getting a reading, my friend, though. You deserve it, but you're getting a reading. Take that as a win, my friend. Take that as a win. You're welcome, Ginger. It's my pleasure, of course. <laughs> Joe's, like, Joe's like, fine, I'll enjoy it. <laughs> All right, Joe. Bear with me, friend. Bear with me. You deserve it, Joe. You do. All right, Jennifer Rose, this brings to you. All right, Jennifer, focus, focus, focus. Jennifer. Jennifer Spirit saying focus. Jennifer Spirit saying focus. Can you focus for a minute? The Wheel of Fortune. Spirit, Spirit's like, Jennifer, whoosh, come back. All right, Wheel of Fortune, Jennifer, the Wheel of Fortune. So, Vanna, Pat, can I buy a vowel? No. The Wheel of Fortune talks a lot about kind of um, the luck in your life, the luck in your life. And so, this is a major arcana card, so the messaging is really important here. And the luck in your life um, is largely affected by the effort and work in your life. And so if things are, it's isn't to say that bad things don't befall good people and bad things don't befall people who do the work. But I think what you need to hear is that good things happen more frequently when we're doing the work that we need to do. So where your fortunes may have been kind of not the way that you think that they've been or should be, it's not because you, you haven't been doing the work, but that you do need to continue to do the work. The, the kind of the effort, and if we look at the little, I can't really see what the plates say. I'll have to get a magnifying glass because I'm getting that old. Um, but the Wheel of Fortune is often to kind of depicted with all these kind of do the studying, do the reading, do the work, do the effort. Right? We need to kind of do the magic, and that's going to increase the likelihood of the Wheel of Fortune turning out in our favor. It's not just blind luck, per se, but rather kind of informed luck and worked luck. 
And so that's kind of the lesson of magic with a K too, is that, and this is something I've been very fortunate to learn from, um, from all the generous stuff that Tommy Kelly puts out in the world, but that magic really is about the small incremental odds improvements of things coming out your way. And so the wheel of fortune kind of talks to that. Do the work, set the intention, do the ritual, do the reading, do the research. And that's going to be part of how your luck turns around. So there's that. So there's that. You're very welcome for the reading, Flora. It's my point. <laughs> <laughs> you always have concerns, Michelle. My goodness. Spirit is like, Jesus, already. Come on. All right, good deal. All right, all right, all right, all right. Do, 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 Well, Joe, let's find out. All right, so this one's for Greta. Greta is getting the nap card. <laughs> Greta is getting the nap card. <laughs> Greta gets the nap card, which is the ace of naps. All right, Greta, for you, let's see what we got here. It's the eight of wands, the suit of work, effort, task. The eight of wands talks about getting things in order. So things here are going uh, in the right direction. Things are starting to move in the right direction. But this is kind of a time for you to start putting things, kind of getting things aligned. So you can see that all the wands are kind of, they're all going in one direction, but they're not all lined up. And so lot, essentially get, get a sense here of the, that saying, a lot of irons in the fire, right? I got a lot of irons in the fire. A lot of things, a lot of activities going on. Things are going to hit at different times and that's ultimately why they're not kind of working as quickly or as well as you'd like them to work but the eight of wands talks about you kind of getting everything to come in we're so afraid sometimes to say no to an opportunity or wait on an opportunity well something else kind of lines with it that we're afraid the opportunity is going to go away i don't feel like that's the chance the eight of wands talks about you needing to kind of get your effort and task not necessarily going in the same direction it's all going in the right direction but aligned so that your task and effort isn't so chaotic it's not so um it's it's not so catch as catch can or haphazard and you don't miss opportunities to really capitalize on the work that you're doing so so whatever you're thinking of it. whatever you're thinking of it. Well, I'm glad, Jennifer. You're very welcome. All right, Joe, this brings us to our final reading of the night, and it is for my good friend Joe, who has been kind of grumpy pants. Uh, but that's okay, Joe. We're all allowed to be grumpy pants, right, my friend? All right, but listen, friends, uh, before I give the card, if you're new here or if you're, uh, if you're not new, even if you're not new, and you like what we're doing, um, subscribe and follow the page here on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. That um, that makes sure that uh, the work we do gets noticed for sure. Um, if you weren't so inclined, um, this week's $5 Friday will still be up there, even though it's a holiday, it's still Friday. And so we'll be doing that. And if you're so inclined, even beyond that, uh, and you'd like to join the Patreon page, do that. I got to get back to doing that more frequently. So, um, But I, I'm figuring it out. All those things help. Well, thank you, Jennifer Rose. I'm glad that you think I'm the best. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by that. Very, very humbled by that. All right, Joe, my friend. It is the nine of pentacles. Slap on your dishwasher, my fine friend. So the nine of pentacles, right? So remember, pentacles is resources, time, money, and energy. And the nine of pentacles is kind of this penultimate card, right, which kind of reaches almost to the point of transition right? Almost to the kind of point of transition um, of the Ten of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles talks about you kind of looking at and doing an inventory 
of all the resources in your life. Oh, Joe, such a beautiful message for you right now. Well, you may be feeling some loss in other areas. The Nine of Pentacles is a good card for accounting. The Nine of Pentacles is a good card to see how your resources have positively infected your life, infected, affected the other people in your lives and or in their lives, right? The Nine of Pentacles kind of talks about taking these final moments, um, not of life, but in this project that you're working on, take an accounting of the energy, the time, the resources, the money that you put into all these areas in your life, how you spent them, how you didn't spend them. And this is going to help you see the, the kind of the fruitfulness and the joy and the, um, the, the growth potential that you have right now in your life. So the, maybe this isn't the way you feel because you've been a bit of a grumpy Gus, and that is perfectly okay. We're allowed to be grumpy. This is a good opportunity for you to at least plant the seed that this won't last forever. This too shall pass, my friend. And that the Nine of Pentacles is a good way for you to kind of move past that. Start listening to the other people in your life who are telling you just what your time and energy and resource has meant to them. And that's going to help you start to realize the real effect that you have on other people. Gee willikers, what a great Thanksgiving message. All right. All right, friends. So that brings us to the end of the Tarot Tuesday show. Thank you so much uh, for joining me as always, right? Especially in this time of Thanksgiving. I want to thank you uh, for being part of the show. We're nearly at 100 episodes now. We've been doing this for almost, I don't even know how long, like three or four years. This is really a lot of fun and I enjoy it. I enjoy that people talk to, they say good luck on your show or they, you know, they, they, they see me and like I saw you on your show and man, that makes me feel good that I touch them with that message that they needed in that moment. And that's good stuff. That's always good for readers to hear and see, but that does is not possible without you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Go into this week filled with graciousness, gratitude, thankfulness, protect your energy in areas where your family or your friends are trying to siphon that off or make you feel bad. Remember, friends, that obligation is about the other person and it's not about you. Do what you need to do to be thankful. Do what you need to do to protect you and the ones that you love. Friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so, so much for joining me this week. And we'll be back next week with something special. No one even guessed the cards. So I guess you'll just have to wait to find out. It's exciting. It's exciting. All right, friends. We'll see you soon. Good night. Good luck. Happy Thanksgiving.